Hello everyone and welcome to my Friday message. So how do hope and optimism relate to medical misinformation? Today's guest is Dr. Brian Southwell. He's an adjunct professor in Duke's Department of Medicine, an associate of the Duke Initiative for Science and Society, and he directs the Science in the Public Sphere program at RTI International. Dr. Southwell will discuss his answer to our question and more, but first I'd like to share a few research updates and recognitions. The entrepreneurship and innovative spirit of School of Medicine faculty was on full display in the recent Invented at Duke 2023 event. Highlights included a new tonometer that better detects eye pressure for more accurate glaucoma screening, a new surgical trocar designed for safer, faster, and easier placement of chest tubes, and a precision oncology platform designed to better treat cancerous tumors in the prostate, lung, breast, and liver. The overarching theme for each invention is the ability to deliver more precise treatments to the patients thanks to the use of tiny cameras, pressure sensors, or publicly available bioinformatics platform. And this is just a small snapshot of our faculty's commercialization and invention efforts. In a recent five-year report provided by Robin Razor, Director of the Office of Licensing and Ventures, the School of Medicine has had an impressive increase in a number of indicators of commercialization. In 2023, the school submitted 187 invention disclosures, filed 252 patents, and created nine new startups, outpacing all other schools at Duke. The focus among our faculty has been associated with an impressive increase in total revenue over the last five years across the university. And that spirit of innovation resulting in major impact has been the hallmark of Dr. Blake Wilson's career. Blake, currently an adjunct professor in the School of Medicine, who has spent his career at the intersection of engineering and medicine. He has been awarded the 2024 IEEE Medal from the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers, along with Graham Clark, for their work that led to the modern cochlear implant, which has restored hearing in over one million people. The award recognizes innovation in healthcare technology with exceptional contributions to technologies and applications befitting healthcare, medicine, and the health sciences. Congratulations to Blake and to all our scientists and physician scientists for your innovation, discovery, and service. This is the final Friday message for 2023. And as you all know, January 2024 begins Duke University's centennial celebration. And I just want to highlight events that will kick us off. The official centennial event kickoff will be on January 9th, 2024 in Cameron Indoor Stadium. And you can participate in person or via live stream. In Research and Innovation Week, 100 Years of Discovery will take place on January 29th, featuring the work of the Dean Emerita, Dr. Nancy Andrews, as well as Dr. Gita Swamy, Kanisha Zimmerman, and Azaretta Riley. And on January 31st, Dr. Rajiv Shah will be the keynote speaker at the Victor J. Zhao Distinguished Lecture in Global Health, making big bets to improve public health. Follow the links on your screen for more details, and we will be highlighting up and coming events on our Friday messages throughout the year. This is a great opportunity to take pride in what we've accomplished as we plan our next 100 years. And before I have you sit in on my conversation with Dr. Southwell, I want to take a moment to wish you all a very happy holiday and a wonderful new year. So Brian, thanks so much for joining me today. Yeah. Um, I had the pleasure of participating in a meeting that you hosted recently yeah. on a national forum on best practices and health misinformation, a topic that is, is really challenging. So tell me a little bit about how you approached organizing that meeting. Yeah, well, you know, Mary, it, it all stems from a belief that there's a lot more that we can be doing uh, to help patients and their families navigate what is really a wide open and, and messy information environment you know, currently. Um, and we certainly saw that spotlighted you know, during the pandemic, but we've been yeah. dealing with that challenge for, for quite some time. And the thought is that you know, rather than just deferring to the headlines, which suggests you know, that misinformation is some novel toxin that's infecting us you know, somehow, and mm -hmm. uh, that really there's more we can be doing to bring together healthcare professionals um, to think in a proactive and positive way about how to help um, you know, families navigate um, you know, this environment. And so that was really the inspiration here, um, was to think about well, what could be done um, rather than just bemoaning you know, the headlines, um, to really start to build um, systems to, to help patients and their families. And as you might remember, um, 
I was very disturbed by, by the challenges with uh, health, health misinformation, and I looked and found you mm -hmm. as somebody that had been looking at this for some time, and particularly thinking about how you incorporate um, communication skills yes. in our, our trainees. Yeah, I, I really appreciate your, your leadership on this was crucial. Um, you know, we recognize an opportunity for Duke and RTI International, which is the nonprofit institute where, where I work, um, to collaborate um, you know, on this. And we were also really fortunate to find um, you know, that around the same time we were having some of those discussions, uh, this new coalition for trust and right. health and science um, it was being born. Um, and that's turned out to be a, a wonderful partner you know, as well. It's this new coalition um, that really has grown quite impressively. So did you come up from the meeting with a consensus on kind of a path forward? Yeah, I think there were a number of things that we um, realized. Part of what we realized is that there's a lot of work to do um, still. Uh, oh. but, um, but I also think that most people walked away from the meeting with a real sense of hope um, and optimism. Uh, that ultimately um, this is a concern, um, but it's, it's been a long-standing concern um, for the American public. And there's a lot that we can do within the context of healthcare and public health. That's part of what um, I think we realized, is that this, the, our way through this is going to be um, you know, building capacity for listening to patients, uh, building capacity for having those awkward conversations, you know, sometimes in the examination room or, or when people are, are calling you know, on the phone. But what we need to do is turn away from just assuming that we're going to somehow be able to vanquish misinformation from our world, from our information environment. That's not going to happen. Um, you know, in fact, if we try to do that, it, it, it's sort of akin to the old carnival game of, of whack-a-mole. Um, you're always going to be chasing something new. Instead, what we need to do is really build on the relationships that we have um, with patients and that we can further build um, you know, so that they are, have trusted you know, sources to turn to um, in moments of crisis, so that they have good information um, you know, to guide their families when they're making the tough decisions that we know they're trying to do you know, every day. Well, certainly from a viewpoint of being a dean of medical school, what it reinforced to me is the incredible opportunity to teach communication skills in a workforce that's massive. Yes. Our MDs, our PhDs, our health professional students, and then they become local sources of appropriate information. And the great news is that despite the headlines about the worries of the rise in mistrust, about the worries of ways in which you know, institutions are losing credibility, we know that one's healthcare uh, professional, that one's relationship with a clinician is often still really valued um, and trusted by many people. There are many people across the country that Frankly, it would be good if they could have more direct access um, you know, to care than they do. But in many instances, um, there already are trusted relationships that we can just highlight and further facilitate. And so, and we also know that many healthcare professionals are inspired um, to be doing something you know, positive yeah. in this regard. So I love your optimism. I'm <laughs> naturally an optimist as well. Yeah. Um, and so we're gonna move forward on this. What do you think is your next step forward? I think what we need to do is get down to the hard work of um, you know, building those relationships, but also thinking about um, what opportunities we have to not reinvent the wheel. There are a lot of innovations that are happening in different organizations across the country. And frankly, um, you know, at times, we've not necessarily always collaborated in the ways that we can. So I think part of what we need to do is build forums, precisely what we are doing, um, to share with those best practices, to make sure that we are implementing um, what's known you know, to work um, in different circumstances. We know that motivational interviewing can actually be a, a good tactic for uh, folks to bring into um, an encounter with a patient. Um, and that's something that could be you know, done. We also know that there's a lot more we can do to pay attention to what's out there in the information environment with monitoring um, and with uh, social listening you know, capabilities. And I think those are all things that um, together we can hopefully share resources and find ways to connect organizations to, um, to make this uh, a better world for the patients that well, we serve. I you know, and am a convert and I look forward to working with you and also getting a group together uh, periodically to really check where we are. Absolutely, yes. We, we do have um, a program here at Duke right. even, uh, the Duke Program on Medical Misinformation, where we're going to continue to post um, you know, information uh, relevant, relevant to this. And I'll be happy if anybody um, has further inf um, need to, to get in touch to be, become part of this network that we're hoping to build, a learning network um, right. for best practices. Well, thanks again for your efforts and leadership. And thanks to everybody for all that you do. Have a great weekend.
What we need to do is really build on the relationships that we have um, with patients and that we can further build um, so that they are, have trusted you know, sources to turn to um, in moments of crisis, so that they have good information um, you know, to guide their families when they're making the tough decisions that we know they're trying to do you know, every day.